Okay, so in this video, we will discuss some more questions which are related to the topic trigonometric graphs. The first part of this video is already uploaded on our channel. So in this video, we will talk about some more uh, NUST entry test past paper questions which are related to the topic trigonometric functions and trigonometric graphs. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we have done till the 10th question. Let's talk about the 11th question. So which graph is of tangent function? Now we are interested in the graph of tangent function. So we know that A is for cotangent, then B is for cos, C is for cosecant, and D is for tangent, right? So this should be clear by now. Since we have been discussing so many curves, so this should be clear. Okay, next uh, question is the 12th question. The range of sine function is, now we are interested in the range, okay? When we say range, we talk about the values of y. So this is the sine curve. This is one and this is minus one. Okay, so, right. So we know that uh, the range has all the real values between one and minus one and this is one and this is minus one. So these are also included, right? So it cannot be A because A is saying all the real numbers. Yes, we do have real numbers. We do have fractions, decimal numbers, all the positive and negative numbers, but between minus one and one, but minus one and one are also included, right? So B is the answer. We very, very clear with this that um, why B is the choice, okay? So let's talk about the 13th question now. Okay. So the graph of secant function is, well, what is secant? We know that secant x is 1 by cos x, right? And in order to plot the curves of secant and cosecant, always refer to the graph of cos x and sin x, right? So if we look at A option, A is obviously not the answer because A is the graph of cot function, then B is the sine one, C. Okay, so there's a confusion in C and D. Like most of the time, students are confused between these two values. A simple way of doing so is just to just plot the curve of sine. Okay, so this is sine. If this is sine, this is cosecant. And then let's just plot a curve for cos. So this is the cos curve. So this is secant, right? So this is the graph of secant function. D is the answer. So by now, students, you know, are clear with the curves of sine, cos, tan. They mess up with cot, secant, and cosecant. And in fact, cot is also very, you know, easy. Like it looks very similar to the graph of tan. It's just opposite of that. But if you talk about secant and cosecant, students usually mess up uh, in those areas. And the best way of understanding that is if you are able to plot a sine curve, this would be cosecant graph. And if you are able to plot a cos curve over here, so this would be the curve of secant function. So we are done with the 13th question as well. Okay, let's talk about the 14th one. Graph of cotangent function. Well, this is easy. We have been discussing that in the uh, above example as well. So it would be the C choice, right? Because again, A is A is for um, cosecant, B is for sine, D is for secant. So finally, the answer would be C. Okay, let's talk about the 15th question. Range of cotangent function is, okay, so cotangent function, again, whenever we are interested in the range of something, we have to talk about the y-values. 
If particularly cotangent function, we need to refer to its graph, that is the graph in B. And what do we see? We see that our range or the y values are going on continuously to the um, on both both the y-axis, uh, both the positive y-axis and negative y-axis, right? So we have all the real values. So this would be the answer, right? We are interested in range, so we will look at the y values only, and these are the y values. You can say y values or function values. By function, I mean what function? So the A would be the answer. Okay. Now the sixteenth question is the range of the function 2 sine 7x. Now again, we are interested in range. When we are interested in range, we talk about this part. We talk about y. So think about it as y equals 2 sine 7x. Since this time we have 2. So our graph will be going from 2 to minus 2. Forget about the x values just focus on the y values because we are only interested in the range so it would be from minus 2 and 2 why not minus 1 and 1 well usually we choose minus 1 and 1 but in those cases our function is sine of x or sine of kx right but since this number has changed this time we have 2 here so the answer would be minus 2 and 2 okay let's discuss the next question so this time around, we have the 17th question, which says the domain of tan 3x. Now, obviously, I would never ever advise you to memorize this, that what is the domain of tan 3x? What is the range of tan 3x? No, okay. Keep things clear. Let's talk about the domain of tan x, okay? So if I write the domain of tan x, it has all the real values except those uh, x's such that where x is an odd multiple of pi by 2. And we discussed this in the previous part as well. Why is it like that? Because if I plot the cos curve here, let's uh, tan curve here, for example, so what am I going to get? I am going to get this. Then there's a dotted line. And then we have this. And then again, there's a dotted line, right? And what is the value of function on this point? We have discussed that. The value of function at this point would be pi by 2. Here it would be 3 pi by 2 and so on we will see that there is a repeated pattern that on these values, pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, there's no x value, right? So since there's no x value, that is why we have all the real values except the odd multiples of pi by 2, like pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, etc. So we need to understand one thing that in this case, it means that these values would be skipped, okay, in case of tan x. So if we have tan 3x, since x is being multiplied by 3, in the domain, we will divide that by 3. So we will, if we are saying, and if we are finding it for 3x, the only difference would be that I will multiply 3 here, right? Like I will divide this uh, number by 3. So this will give me the answer. That is all the real values except those x values which are um, on the odd multiples of pi by 6. Initially it was pi by 2 for tan x, but since it is tan 3x, so it would be pi by 6. So it is a rule. I did not do it for the purpose of this question, only no. It is a rule. Whenever your x is being multiplied by something, you divide that value with the simple case. By simple, I mean whatever you have for tan x, you divide your value for by that number in order to get the value for tan 3x. So we will divide by 3. For example, if you look at the 18th question, again, 
we have to find the domain of 2 cot 3x. Ignore this 2, we are only interested in the domain, so we will focus on this 3x, okay? And now, the question is that what is the domain of simple um, cot function? Because we just need to learn the domain of simple cot function and we are good to go. So, the domain of simple cot function is uh, all the real values except the values of x such that x equals k pi. Okay. So, this is what we know, right? So, if we are multiplying it by 3, we will divide this value by 3 for cot 3x. So, this means that the answer would be b, right? So, just learn the domain for tan x, cot x, sin x, cos x and automatically your, uh, you will get your answer as per the question. Since 3 is being multiplied, so we have divided this 3 from the uh, original um, function, right? From the original value. Okay. So the next question is the 19th question. We have Amplitude of minus 17 sine 14x. Again, we are talking about the amplitude. So forget about this. Just focus on this part. We just take mod of this number, whatever it is, and that is the amplitude because that is the height actually. For example, if I plot this, it would be something of this type. And this value would be 17 and this value would be minus 17. So C would be the answer. And for the 20th question, period of cos 3x plus 7. Now we are interested in period. So we will only focus on the x part. So what is the period of cos x? Well, the period of cos x is 2 pi. But since this time around, we have cos 3x. So since we have 2 pi for cos x, for cos 3x, since we are multiplying x by 3, so here we will divide it by 3 and b would be the answer. So this is how we find the period. And you guys must have noticed that even if we're talking about the domain or period, we are basically looking at the x value. Forget about this value. Forget about this value. We are only interested in whatever is happening with x. If we are multiplying something with x, for example, 3, so we will divide this 3 uh, from the simple case, right? For the case of cos x, for the case of cortex, right? Like in cortex, the domain is all the real values except those values of x which are coming um, on like, you know, pi, then 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on, right? That is for cortex. This time, we're talking about cot 3x, so we will divide that value by 3, okay? So be very careful. If the question is about period, focus on x. If it's about amplitude, focus on this part. If it's about range, again, focus on the coefficient of the function like this one and not on this part. Uh, again, this was range, but since it is cotan, uh, that is uh, one by tangent, so we have this graph, we talk about this graph, we do see that we have all the real values without any exceptions. So this is how our questions would vary, and we need to focus on the question, like what thing they want us to find. If they're talking about the range, we will only think about y equals sin x, we'll think about this number one here, right? And then find the answer because the question is range. So for these questions, the only thing which you need to do is just practice graphs with their x-axis and y-axis. If you are able to understand all these graphs, if you're able to memorize them for any purpose, you are good to go. As long as you know the graph, you know the coordinate axis, you would be knowing that when the value is zero, when the value is infinity and stuff like that. And on the basis of that, you would be able to easily find the range and 
domain so i am not the type of teacher who would encourage you to memorize a lot of things but yes for any t since it is not your uh, sat exam it is not your uh, cambridge cie you have to memorize things because they are not going to give you any data booklets so yeah that is how we will do these questions okay so we are done for today